you want to learn how to install and use homebrew on a mac then stick around to find out how I'm Thomas with Brainchust Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. On this channel, we talk about tools and techniques to advance yourself as a web developer. In this week's tutorial, we're going to walk through a tool, specifically Homebrew. Homebrew is described as the missing package manager for Mac OS and Linux. We're going to walk through how to install and the basic usage of homebrew. I've covered homebrew briefly in the past in my tutorial where I walk through how to create your first Ruby on Rails application, but I thought maybe it deserved a little bit more time and we could point out a few more features if we took some time to go a little bit more in depth. So let's get into the tutorial to walk through how you install and use homebrew on a Mac. And scene. Homebrew is a package manager for your system. If you've never heard of a package manager, Basically, this just automates the process for installing, updating, and configuring, as well as removing software on your machine. You can find Homebrew at brew.sh. To install Homebrew, you're gonna go ahead and copy the line here and then paste into your terminal. In my case, I'm not gonna run that command since I already have Homebrew installed. I'll also paste that in the description below. Once Homebrew is installed, you can run the brew command to see some available options. Examples here include usage, troubleshooting, contributing, and additional help. Packages in Homebrew are referred to as a formula. An example usage for installing a package could be brew install git. In this case, we already have git installed, so it won't actually make this installation for us and instead notify us that we already have this installed and if we want to, we can go ahead and upgrade. So the next command you can see there is brew upgrade git. We can use this command to upgrade packages we already have installed. Now that homebrew has gone ahead and finished upgrading git for us, we can go ahead and clear the screen. So you've seen how to install and upgrade a specific package or formula. If you wanted to upgrade all of your formulas, you could just remove the formula name and instead just run a brew upgrade. This would upgrade all of the formulas you have on your machine. If you want to make sure that all your references to packages are up to date, you could run brew update. This is a command you'll want to run semi-frequently on your machine. If you forget to run this command, brew is just going to run this automatically for you when you try to install a package if it's been too long since you've last updated. Running this command, you can see we are already up to date. Next, you can run brew outdated to see which packages you have or formulas you have that are not currently up to date. As you can see, you can install command line software via brew in the form of packages or formulas, but that's not all. You can also use the cask extension of homebrew to install GUI applications like Spotify. I just want to interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes. Down. Yes. Roll over. Good boy. You're the goodest boy. Good boy. Down. Down. Oh my gosh. We're going viral, Bear. Run brew cask uninstall to uninstall a piece of software. When attempting to run the cask command, you could potentially run into this invalid depends on Mac OS version. The version itself may differ depending on the cask you're trying to install or uninstall. To resolve, you go ahead and paste the following command, which I will link to in the description. Next, we can rerun the uninstall command and provide our password. As you can see, Spotify has been uninstalled. Now let's go ahead and reinstall it. To install this application back to our machine, we can run brew cask install Spotify. As you can see, Spotify is now back in our applications folder, installed entirely from the homebrew cask extension. There are tons of casks out there, 
and you can create your own homebrew formulas and casks as well. I just wanted to point this out as I typically see tutorials on homebrew referencing only the command line installation and much less common to see GUI applications also installed via the command line, which I thought was pretty cool. The ability to install GUI applications via the command line lends really nicely to scripting a setup of your development machine, which is something I'd like to get into in the future. But for now, let's just flip back over to the terminal full screen. A couple more commands you may need to run from time to time are brew doctor to kind of just see what's going on. Occasionally, if something's going wrong, brew doctor is going to help you out. In this case, we have a formula that we need to replace as well as one that maybe needs to be linked. So Brew Doctor just lets you see these potential problems and kind of guide you on how you may want to solve them. Lastly, you can run Brew Cleanup. This is just going to go through and remove all unnecessary files, old versions of formula that we've upgraded from and no longer need. Again, this is another one that's just nice to run from time to time, just kind of clean up bloat, prune out all of those old packages to get that space back and keep everything clean and tidy. As always, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, if you could very gently press the like button, I'd really appreciate it, as well as subscribe if you're new around here. Please leave questions or requests in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next tutorial.